there's one team in Germany that is shocking everyone in a negative way, it is Union Berlin. You guys might have heard of the story of this team coming up and all of a sudden qualifying for Champions League football last year when absolutely nobody expected it. But as we speak, things are looking terrible for Union Berlin. 18th in a league with only six points. And that is not all. Since they did qualify for Champions League football, they are obviously in the group stages. And Real Madrid, Napoli, Braga, all of them are now currently situated ahead of them. So clearly, things are going horribly wrong for a team like Union Berlin, who somewhat became everybody's favorite second team in Germany right now because everyone just loves the story of the club. I mean, there are stories that I mentioned in my previous rebuilds of this team where basically the fans donated blood to, get her, to gather money to try and help the team pay off their debts. So this team is legendary and sadly, they have just let go of their coach. And it was a sad moment for the fans and the coach himself as well. But now it's time to rebuild Union Berlin and try and take this team back into Champions League level football. Yo, what's up? Look at this sexy. He's got a big mustache. I like him. And look, he works very hard. And I want you guys to know that we, YouTube is messing us up. We need you to go to the second channel called Chatty Sports 2. We need you to click on the videos. We need you to like the videos. We need to comment on the videos. And I need you to do something. So we have just dropped a brand new series, the My Player Career Mode thing. After this video, go and check it out. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Union Berlin is known for their counter-attacking play. There's one player that everyone probably knows at this point, which is Geraldo Becker, the fastest player in the Bundesliga. And the way Union used to play was like sit back deep and just smash their opponents on the counter. At least that's what I remember. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Union Berlin's defense is doing quite terrible at the moment. So I focused on defensive coaches coming in first. I've gone very heavy there and also done the goalkeeping. Midfield and attack will fix later on. The tactical vision is going to be counter-attacking because from what I know of Union, Union Berlin from the last season, the way they used to play was to kind of have a deeper line and then hit their opponents on the counter, especially with Geraldo Becca, who you can see right there. Now, when we go across to the starting 11, you will see these players now here. Geraldo Becca still probably um, the best or let's say the most valued player in this Union Berlin team. But this season, Laiduni has been one of their best players. Their top scorer at the moment is Behrens with four goals and also Robin Gosens with four goals who has just recently joined them this season. And when people saw these transfers, they thought that Union Berlin actually strengthened in certain spots and they would look quite good this season. But clearly that wasn't true because last season, players like Leite, players like Doki, who by the way was insane last year, he was one of the top five center backs in the Bundesliga arguably, so all these players' form has dropped off. Doki had to, had to deal with a bunch of injuries throughout the past couple of months. You have Juranovic who has come in from Celtic. People were just praising him so much at the time because he played a game against France and he basically shut down Mbappe for a little bit. And everyone believed the hype, but sadly, things haven't necessarily worked out as well for him at Union Berlin as they were going for him at Celtic. So looking at this squad, you have Geraldo Beck up top, Kevin Folland, who has now just recently joined, but Kevin Behrens has been the main man uh, and he has been scoring the goals, but obviously ratings wise, we're gonna be relying on Folland. We have Datro Fofana, who's an amazing talent, but sadly only loaned in. We have the likes of Tussart, who a lot of you guys might remember from Hertha Berlin. And before that, actually, I believe Olympique Lyon. So we do have a couple of decent players here alongside Bonucci. Yes, the freaking... <laughs> I can't believe he's still playing games, man. Bonucci is here and he's 80 rated. Now, I fully expect his, his rating to just crash down instantly. He will only be usable for, for the first half of the season. After that, players like Leite are going to be higher rated than him and they will take over. We also have Roussillon, who I still remember got beat 
incredibly. He was through on goal, sprinting, and then Mickey van der Ven, the now Spurs centre-back, used to play for Wolfsburg. He just chased him throughout the entire pitch, caught up to him, and put in a last-man tackle, saving his team from conceding from Roussillon. So his start at Union Berlin wasn't too good at that time. We have Mikkel Kaufmann, who I believe in the second division in Germany last season, was doing an incredible job. I don't know how he's doing this season, though. He's not under the top scorers or anything like that, so I assume things are not looking too good for him. But generally speaking, guys, this team, it did outperform themselves last year, right? So they were doing a great job, and no one expected them to finish champ in Champions League football. It's a great story. Everyone in the Bundesliga loved it. But at the same time, this season things are completely falling apart and it would be a true shame if this team actually was to go down into the second division so let's try and save them make the right transfers and stick to their plan which is that counter-attacking style okay so the first thing i want to do with this team is i want to get rid of any player that's loaned in i don't want to have any player in here that is not committed to the club long term so brendan aronson i'm sorry goodbye we then also have the likes of uh datra fofana who's a great talent but I'm not going to keep him in this squad. We also have others loaned out, though. We have Keita Endo loaned out. Pushas is out there. Grill is out there. Not that important players. Same with Skarke. But Jamie Leveling is a very good talent. And uh, yeah, that could be an interesting one down the line. Sibachu was here last season. Currently seems to be at Mönchengladbach, which I didn't know. I assume he got there as like the Marcus Turam replacement. Uh, but yeah, Torsby is here as well and no others from that point on so we got rid of the ones that are not committed to the club let's see which transfers make the most sense oh and by the way if we want to future proof this squad age is gonna be an issue because if you look at the likes of bonucci schwalov knoche russio folland renault kedira all these lads we are looking at a bunch of older players including Geraldo becca i'm gonna keep him for as long as possible but some others here could turn into an issue very soon, but we will focus on the oldest ones first and try and make the right decisions there. For me, ideally, I want to have a tall striker next to Geraldo Becker so he can head the ball along the pitch so Geraldo can pick it up and run through. So for that reason, I am going for Tere Moffi. This guy is a six foot two tall striker. He used to play for Lorient last season. This season, I believe he has joined the likes of Nice and he hasn't done as well. He is going to be my new number nine. Kevin Folland and others are not going to be playing in this team. I'm sorry, that is not the plan. Atene Moffi is the plan. And take a look at his stats right here. Folland is going to bring us some good money, by the way, once we sell him. But Moffi, 91 pace for a six foot two tall player. So pace, counter attacking, that fits perfectly. He's left footed. Let's put him on the left. 77 shooting, 72 dribbling, 77 physicality, high attacking work rate from Nigeria. I feel like this is the perfect transfer for us. And just as I brought in Moffi, I thought, let's reunite these two. It's Enzo Lefe. Last season at Lorient, guys, I'm telling you right now, he was unplayable. He was one of the best midfielders in the league. Uh, and now he has joined Stad Rene. And he doesn't have as much responsibility in this team. I don't think he takes the set pieces and stuff like that. And he might be playing a different position as well. But Enzo Lefe last season at Lorient, alongside the likes of Terem Moffi, he was insane. So he is coming into this team as a center midfielder. Kevin Folland goes back to Ligue 1, plus 12 million on top of this deal. And Toussaint, I'm sorry, but I don't plan with you because Laiduni this season has the most assists in this Union Berlin team. And I want to give him the playtime over someone like Toussaint, who is coming from their rivals in the city, which is Hertha Berlin. So Enzo Lefe is now here, right footed, four star skill moves, three star weak foot. And he is going to be playing some great passes into the likes of Becca and especially Moffi, just like I did at Lorient. And I'm already loving this rebuild. So after making all those transfers and changing a few things up, let's take a look into the team and how it's done in the first season. Fifth. Would you look at that, guys? That would be an incredible achievement. I I'm, I'm genuinely being honest here. If you told me last season, when Jon Berlin finishes in Champions League football, and then the season after they get European football once again, it doesn't have to be Champions League football. I think any Union Berlin fan would have taken that. This is incredible. Fifth position, 
58 points on us. Bayern Munich obviously win the league title. It's going to be a battle to try and get up there and try and beat that Bayern Munich side because they have so many incredible young talents in there as well. The likes of Alfonso Davies, Musiala to say the least. So I am very scared of that Bayern Munich squad. But now let's take a look into the team. Oh, look at that. Moffi, 81. I think that's a plus four. Geraldo Becker, only a plus one. Enzo, great growth. Kral, I turn into a center mid, and it's worked really well. Laiduni, <coughs> sorry, is uh, on a 78 and unhappy. I assume Tussar, yeah, Tussar has been play taking play time away from him. I have just now accepted an offer for him, though. So hopefully Laiduni is not going to be too unhappy for too long. Bonucci has gone down by only plus a minus two, which surprises me. Goki up to an 80. Lovely. Juranovic with a plus one. Leite plus two, I believe. Goal since has gone up to an 80. Some incredibly well-rounded stats. And we lost our goalkeeper. What the hell? Who the hell bought my... <laughs> Bro, okay. Well, we lost our goalkeeper who would have been 32 years old anyways. Or 31, 32, something like that. Next season, we'll have to bring in a new one. I didn't even realize. But let's see, uh, let's see once again here in the stats... Moffy, 15 goals. Great stuff. Gosens, 14 goals from left wing back. Wow. Geraldo Becker, 12 and 5. But that's kind of realistic, you know, because he's one of their top goal scorers this season. So can't say anything against it. Kral, 7 and 12. Schaefer, off the bench, 5 and 10. Lads. Things are looking good. Starting into the second season with the signing of a goalkeeper as we have to go for one due to the, uh, yeah, release clause by of one of our goalkeepers. But this is Alvaro Valles. Now, a lot of people might not know him because last season with Las Palmas in the second division of Spain, only towards the second half of the season, he kind of started taking over the goalkeeping spot, if I remember correctly. At that time, I was actually watching a couple of their games. They were extremely dominant down there in the second division. And now, this season, Las Palmas is doing better than most people expected them to do. And he is one of the main reasons for that. He's doing a great job as a goalkeeper. I believe Las Palmas also have a very talented centre-back that came in from Andorra with the name of Mike Marmol. Possibly one of the bigger Spanish centre-backs. Watch out for that one. But uh, Alvaro Valles is now here. And he is 80 rated. That's lovely. 26 years old, perfect age. He can be here for a long time and he's six foot four tall. This guy is someone that could make a big move in the future. So keep watching out for this one. This is like the type of goalkeeper that could end up at like a Brentford, for example. Since Bonucci is getting old and dropping in rating, it's time to bring in a new center back. And since we have been able to bring in some great players from Liga, I thought let's continue that trend. This is someone from Lens, another team. That is surprisingly qualified for Champions League football, if I remember correctly. I think they're in the group with PSV Eindhoven. Akundo Medina is now joining us. This is someone that probably not a lot of you guys know, but he's actually very high rated in this game. He starts off at like, what is it? I'm, I'm checking it right now. 80, actually. He comes in with an 81 for us right here. A left-footed centre-back. I believe Leita has a better weak foot, so we're going to take him over and across to that left centre-back position. 76 pace, great passing, great dribbling, 81 defending, 80 physicality. This guy seems to be able to do it all. And currently, for his team, he's actually doing a great job as well. Like, in the past year, he's managed to get two goals and four assists from that centre-back position. So clearly someone that could help us in terms of moving the ball forward from that defensive position as fast as possible to get things going for our strikers and midfielders. Medina, welcome to our team. He's only 25. Lads, we've done it. Progress is here. Third position in the league. Union Berlin on 70 points. Bayern Munich on 81. I wonder if we will ever be able to catch up to them. But that is the journey that we are on right now. And if we look at the team, you can see that Becker has actually gone up quite a bit this time around. Moffy up to an 84. Kral has become the captain, it looks like. Enzo Lefe 82. Kral 82. Laiduni, nice amount of growth this time around. And then we have Gosens on an 83, who obviously had a great season last time. Medina has gone up a bunch. 84 rated, our highest rated center back. Elton Leite on an 81. What? Wait, did he? Not, not a plus six. I was about, I was looking at that thing at the top and I'm like, oh, plus six. Wow. But obviously that's not his overall. It's like his form and stuff. But Turkey up to an 82. Juranovic 81. And as we get to the stage of uh, this career mode, 
we also had someone on the bench here. Leveling has come back. That is a very good one. Generally speaking, our bench is actually quite decent. And I'm very happy with that. But um, we need to realize something. And that is the fact that we do have a bunch of older players now still in a starting 11. So Becca is 30 years old, 82 rated. Now, I'm not going to sell him yet. He's going to remain here. Juranovic, I'm kind of okay with. But how long can we go with the likes of Gosins, Juranovic, Becca? I really wonder if we can achieve our goals with these guys in the team. But that's a different story. Real quick, stats-wise, Muffy, 28 goals, 1 assist. Becca, 19 and 4. And Gosins again. How does he do it? From left wing back, 16 goals, 4 assists, 20 goal contributions. Juranovic with 18. That's... Our fullbacks are insane. So I made my decision going into this season. I am going to trust this team, okay? So I do have a bunch of money. 88 million, actually. But I feel like to be able to spend that much money on a transfer, we need to go ahead and prove ourselves once again that we are a Champions League club from the Bundesliga. So I'm going to go for another season with this team. And then after that, we can go spending. Well, I am madly proud of this team because as you can see right here, we made it to the Champions League semi-finals and lost to PSG 5-1. Got absolutely destroyed. I get that. But at the end of the day, to take this team that far without any massive, massive signings, I'm actually really happy about pulling this off. But getting to the semi-finals now means that a lot more teams, a lot more players all around the world should know that this team is one to take serious and this is a project that they would want to join. So hopefully we can spend the big money coming up soon and then get to the finals, which we miss out on this time. But in the league, we had a unique chance. Frankfurt, 71 points. They won the league title. Bayern Munich down in seventh. This could have been our season. And I feel like next time, Bayern is going to be much stronger. They're going to bounce back and we might have missed our chance there. So looking at the team right now, we are seeing... Ooh, Becca, 86. Buddy, you're on fire. 31 years old. He's growing. I like it. Muffy on the same rating. Kral, Enzo, both on an 84. Laiduni, I like him, but he's not growing. So we are going to possibly replace him in the upcoming season. He's one of the older players as well. Gosins is now 31 years old. So now that we have established ourselves and these guys have helped us to get here, I think now's the time to upgrade. So depending on how much money we get, we're going to make some big changes in the upcoming season. So let's take a quick look into the best performers. Muffy, Gosins. How? <laughs> I don't get it. Becca, 20 and 3. Kral, 11, 15. Juranovic, 10, 18. Enzo, why, why only 3-3? Three and three? That is a bit disappointing, I have to admit. But hey, guys, an incredible year, and we have established ourselves as a Champions League club. Since we are a couple of years into the future, at this point, Chelsea should still be somewhere in League One or the Championship. I mean, based on all the financial issues, they are getting relegated, right? So I'm going in for one of their players. Moises Caicedo, I am now rescuing you from Chelsea, who probably are going to go down alongside Manchester City. I don't know, man. All this stuff is crazy to me. Everton have gotten 10 points uh, for violating something where they paid, like, where they breached financial regulations for, like, 20 million. And already there are talks about Chelsea having an offshore firm in Cyprus where they were paying players and coaches and stuff on the side giving them millions for basically giving like giving them the opportunity to make sure they can give those people money outside of the system that the financial fair play sees. So yeah, it's not looking good for Chelsea, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. And it is going to be a massive shame to see stuff like that happen. It's bad. I don't want any club that has established themselves at the top level to get punished like this. But hey, there's an issue there and they will be looking into it and it's not looking good specifically for Chelsea. Manchester City won. I don't even know what the hell is going on. 115 breaches. We'll see what happens there. But Caicedo is now ours. He comes in as the main CDM for this team. 85 rated. He can clearly take this team to the next level. And our budget, by the way, starting off the season was 180 million. I believe Helton later used to play in a Portuguese league, if I'm not mistaken. So goodbye, Helton. I'm sending you back there because we are going for, of course, I'm going for a big one. Antonio Silva, welcome to Union Berlin. 
He is coming in for 37 million plus health on later, and it's not necessarily a big upgrade in terms of rating. By the way, respect to Yeko for constantly growing as a center back there on the bench. Really well done up to a 79. But here he is. Antonio Silva now comes into the team. He is 83 rated. One of the biggest talents when it comes to that position in world football. And I'm very excited by him. I really wonder who's going to pick him up. But for now, he's going to be part of Union Berlin. This team has gotten past Real Madrid in the round of 16. Struggling against AS Monaco a little bit to get past them 6-4 in the end. Who is our semi-final opponent? Manchester United. You know what? I have not played against them this year, I believe. We have beaten them in the first game, beaten them in the second. Now the question becomes... Is this a season in which we can win multiple titles? Bayern Munich beats us here in the last game of the season. Champions League final will be against Manchester City, of course. I'm getting the worst one to play against. Oh boy. Both Manchester teams back to back in the Champions League. In the league itself, please tell me we have won it. Third. Ah, just one point. If we would have gotten the win against Bayern Munich, we would have been in that first position. But you know what? We have stabilized Union Berlin as a Champions League club for years, multiple seasons. So I cannot be upset about that. We don't necessarily need to win that. And Caicedo has a red card. What is it with me and Champions League finals and missing one of my best players? He grew to an 88. Laiduni, it's your chance again. 85 pace. Wow, I don't remember him being that quick at all, but hey, he must have grown. So I'm going to put, who am I going to put onto the bench here? Thorsby is the one. He comes onto the bench as a midfield option. But guys, Moffy 89, Becca 86, Lefe 87, Kral 87. I initially thought I had to replace Becca and Gosins and possibly Juranovic, but we don't have to. Juranovic, 31 years old, Gosins, 32 Becca 32 as well. And now with Laiduni in here as well. Another one who is past the 30. So I'm actually very excited to see what this team can pull off. Turkey is 28 as the uh, the one after those older ones. And Yekul on the bench. Have you guys seen that just a second ago? He's actually grown to an 81. Is he like a big talent? I don't even know. Honestly, I, I can't tell. But I, I, I don't remember him actually being... A big talent in this game. So very impressive to see him grow on the bench. Now, performance, Moffi or Becca? Becca! It wasn't that good of a season, actually, for the strikers. Becca with 18 and 11. That's not bad, okay? That is 29 goal contributions and 40. That's pretty impressive. Go since... <laughs> I'm not even surprised anymore. Moffi with only 14 goals and zero assists. That is a bit of a letdown. But if he can step up in the Champions League final, it will all be fine. Isaido was missing with the 10 and 6, sadly. Kral 7 and 13. Medina, the center back, who actually gets goal contributions in real life, has gotten six goals and three assists right there. So that is very impressive. Guys, it is now time to take on Manchester City. And I do wonder, who do they have in their team? This far into it, they have Haaland, Foden, Rodrigo. I hate that already. Uh, Rodrigo, I don't know what it is. I can't play against him. Mateusz Nunez ahead of the likes of Rodrigo and Pedri. Oh my God, bro. Sergio Gomez left back. Okay, I can deal with that. But then Min Jae, Ruben Diaz in that centre-back pairing. Hakimi as a right back and Ederson in goal. But I'm telling you right now, I'm getting beat. Definitely. I am going into this final full well knowing and understanding that we are the underdogs. But... Union Berlin were the underdogs last season and got Champions League football in real life. So we are understanding what it means to be the underdogs and still win. So here we go, lads. Since I expect a lot from you because your stats have been incredible. Oh, what the hell is Muffy doing with these guys? Hold on a second. Oh, bro. Did he just put that through the legs of the player who was on the floor? Muffy. Lovely little touch. Impressive stuff. Muffy into Kral. Oh, he still scores with his back to the goal. Kral in Turkish actually means king, by the way. So this is the new king of Manchester City. He owns that club. Dangerous, very dangerous. Phil Foden cuts in. Haaland now kind of open. Laiduni trying to get in between. Rodrigo. 
Of course. Just like he does for his team in real life, this man scores goals when it's most needed. Manchester City's best, in my opinion. Especially while Kevin De Bruyne was injured. Rodrigo has been outstanding. Geraldo Becker. Geraldo Becker into Enzo again. Over to Kral. Kral can shoot from here and he tries his luck. He wants his second. Ah, come on. No! Yes! Too much space. Way too much space again. Bro, we need to stop giving them that space. Come on now. Step in. Lovely tackle. Outside the box, that might have been a penalty. Becker. Counter attack. Just like they do in real life. He just runs past people. He's sprinting. Geraldo Becker. My man has now scored. The typical Union Berlin way. The opponent overloads our half and we find a way to run through with the fastest man in the Bundesliga. He probably competes with the likes of uh, Alfonso Davies for the paciest player or possibly Karim Adeyemi as well. But Geraldo Becker down the right wing, sprints inside and scores. What more do we want? Uh, Haaland gets the pass on Rodrigo and... They are failing, I wanted to say, and I thought that was in. City in the second half. Oh, that tackle is so big. And here we go again. The counter has started. Haaland is on the floor. Rodrigo gets the ball off of Laiduni, who I thought could just sprint through due to his amazing pace now. And Laiduni still fights for it and gets it back, actually. Over the top. Tere Muffy is through. The counter attack once more. Tere Muffy with the strength and no accuracy. Juranovic cross near post. Oh, on the crossbar. Enzo. Oh, mate. We could have had the third. Geraldo. What a ball that is from Enzo. Didn't expect that one to arrive. And here's Tere Muffy. Yes, he cannot stop him. With that, we should have secured the Champions League title for Union Berlin. Unless something absolutely nuts happens in the next 32 minutes of this game. Rodrigo orchestrating another attack here. Kral. Rodrigo just bounces off of him. This man is too strong. Laiduni trying to catch up and help in defense. The five at the back should be quite helpful here. And it will be. Oh, no. Don't give him space. Don't give them the space. Doku makes it 3-2. Okay, something insane might actually happen for them to come back, and I'm scared. Doku got subbed in and scores instantly. Need to get there. Ederson is going to make a mistake. He launches the ball forward. I win that. I win that too. Let's go, Enzo. Enzo Lefe has some space, and I'm not going to do anything with it. Trust me. I'm just going to go down the wings, hold on to the ball, and win this trophy, lads. I'm not going to risk it at all. Here we go. You can chase me all you want, Manchester City. But this trophy belongs to the underdogs. Champions League winners, Union Berlin. Thanks to the likes of Geraldo Becker, Tere Moffi, Enzo Lefe, and many others that have come into this team and have made this possible. And let's not forget the king is going to get to lift this trophy. Union's Kral is the one at the end. I really hope that Union Berlin can turn around their season. I would hate to see them go down. They hopefully can establish themselves as a first division team in the Bundesliga for many years to come. And I do not want to see them go down. And guys, with that, our rebuild is done. Thank you so much for watching. And guys, if you are interested in my private life too and want to talk to me, talk to me about like health, working out, all those things, please follow me on Instagram. I'm happily responding to anyone who wants to talk about working out and all that stuff. So because, yeah, it's a passion of mine. See you guys there, hopefully. And yeah, take care. Peace.